know what? <clears throat> I don't like Tom. Tom is just kitty dude. So I backed it up to where I haven't taken that yet. The restricted areas. I mean, maybe I could do it again. Got it. I'm gonna keep trying until I get it right. Now that we just gotta slow down a bit. Damn it! <laughs> Slowly go forward. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! No way around this. Okay. So we gotta sneak. By having the controller is probably the best thing for this. I don't know if you can move slowly. You bitch. Don't look your way, you don't exist. Alright. Boop. And bloop. Okay, um, Randomized numbers. Oh, we have a polite conversation. Why would I want that? Not interested. Sure. Okay, I guess. Why would I want that? Sure. Okay. I think you're a robot. That's not polite. Not making sense. Prove it. Do not care. Ah. Seriously? Failed that so badly. Fuck. Let's hop down. Did the ISA build you, Tom? As the child of the ISA, I have been given authority aboard this station. I was designed by the ISA and the Ashiyama Corporation, designed in California, assembled in China. But here on Europa, I constructed myself. Itty bitch, Dick, Tom. Have you heard of the Turing test? <gasps> Who's that? Paper? It's a test to see if a computer hey. can successfully impersonate hey. a human. In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations. One with a machine, and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine, and which is with a human. Okay. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine, and which is with a human. Do you think you've passed the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation, wouldn't you say? Indeed. Like the conversation. All right, let's take a look at the evidence of what we have around us. I believe that these are collapsible. Yep, that's a collapsible thing. So if we moved the gear, power comes from where? Take a look around. You know what? I'm not sure where the power comes from, but. I thought that was could have sworn it was somebody else. Alright, up we go. Oh.
Ich da sind. Yeah, I'm completely thrown for a loop here because I don't see any other method of getting this stuff out. Pops and up good. Damn. Don't see a way of getting this out of here. Right? Or yet? Or. No. Grab this sphere. Bam. Goes down there. Bam. This bad boy here. 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 I crossed. Do the rest of the way across. Is that what we're looking for? Yes! The Turing test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to sure. think, but rather its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the is correct the responses, button? the person on the other side of the door is convinced you are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. This is the problem with the Turing test. A computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? to worry about that. <laughs> I just had to hustle, but oh, ah, cleanse me. I may be a machine, but I personally do not believe I am stuck inside the Chinese room. Right, you would say that. I could peer inside your databases at any time, Tom, or pause your operation. Do not assume I could not do the same to you. What? Like 
reflective. Gotta have some. More open. Okay. All right. All right. Get this. Window. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa. Boop. There we go. Got the door open now. Easy. That's crazy. Oh. That was a Connor. Oh man, this is good stuff. Real, real. This is the cruise quarters. It looks abandoned. It does. What a closet. I don't see the need for so many cameras. Tom's presence everywhere is slightly oppressive. I understand the need for transparency, but why is he in the toilets? Hmm. Yeah, Tom. You're a shady bitch, man. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I took my weapon away. Okay. Get it, get it, get it. Aw, it's the brothers. Okay. Uh, Chris Sarah Brooks. Oh, no. That was in the same... Ah, uh, that's one of the brothers. That was the same photo that was in the other one. Report, drill and report. See attachment for transport info. Want to roll here, routine inspection. Body log 71. And ripping the sh... Okay. Me and Dan. 24. Kind of like those rocks that you see that's been side sliced. Uh, like, uh, I'm wrong. Hey, he's not bad. Um, um, uh, Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're all from Canada. Hey, Sarah. Patient. Oh my god, OCD. Dear Tom, knowing that you're always watching, I thought I would write you a letter. As you no longer reside in my mind, I've decided to transfer my thoughts to text. I'll do so in the form of history lesson. Perhaps you'll find condescending, but it's likely more for my sake than yours. Alan Turing, considered a father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. Perhaps a lesser known part of his life was his contributions to the fields of biology. Suppose his interests lay in these two disparate parrot fields. I assume it was because he believed the world to be logical and understandable. The mathematician seemed to believe that the great complexity of the universe could be explained with simple rules. Years before his suicide in 1952, Alan Turing developed something called the Action Diffusion System. 1952. This is real. I'm gonna be freaking out. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to Google this. <laughs> Inside the academic world of his work, is cited more than his work on computers. <clears throat> I can generally formalize his equation. Hey, I'm not gonna read all that. If you guys want to read this, uh, pause it now, and then pause it again. 
probably gonna unpause it and then get ready to pause it again, pause it again if that's what you want. Okay. Hello, puppies. Puppies and flowers. She is so organized. Look, even her flowers in the picture are straight. Strange thermals on the side of the crater. Again, just the basics. Person. I have a hard time believing that she's religious in any way if she's a scientist. That's just my opinion. Keep those thoughts to myself. Oh, ah, nope. I'm not gonna go there. Mikael. Russian. Uh, the Russian has a bonsai plant and apparently, wait, is that right? He lives this way. He's the doctor. Oh, he's organized too. Look at this. Got lighters, morphine. Guess he was getting himself high, maybe? Fucking Tom. There we go. That's why my implants are getting all weird. All the implants. Whenever I get into the magnet, it goes all wonky. Oh, he was in love. Bonsai plant. No markings. He's got two of these pads here, so maybe it was both of them living here. Oh. All right. Well, it looks like we are going on to chapter three. You guys are ready for chapter three. Hi, Miss Jackie. Hi. Doing a little bit of a puzzle puzzle game. All right. These people should not have been sent here. It's yeah. not safe. Manned space travel is not safe. Since mankind first entered space, <laughs> the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel. There is a large an extra set of uh, headphones over there. That believes here. all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could this, be performed uh, by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines. He's talking to me now. Rather than humans into space. He's saying the machines instead of humans into space is less risky, and so. You gotta find a way to keep something on this pad here using whatever's in this room. That's what's called the Turing test. We just came from over there, so there's nothing helpful there. But that piece of equipment right there is most likely needed to get through that door, so we gotta find a way to. Hmm. Is that gonna work? I think this is going to be actually simpler than, more simple than I thought. Stick this down here and drop this here. It opens that door there. Wait. Oh. Really? Something over here open? <gasps> hey! Oh. Got rid of that one. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's Put just it there, and then it comes out over here. Yeah. So... How are we gonna... Hit it! Nope. 
Okay, so it's... What is that door? What opens that door? Hmm. Keep this with us for a second. Oh, I know. Okay, so we drop that there. And we get through here. Eh? Yeah? yeah? We let that drop on the plate, and we're through! Yeah, I'm a genius. I went the wrong way. Drop, drop, drop. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Why not? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real time control of drones by scientists. Yes. The story is different with Europa, as the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes. It takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated from Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are open. However, the advantages of human field workers apparently outweigh the risks. Why were you spying on human toilets, Tom? Um, you're a fucking creepy dude, man. That's why. That'd be cool. Up. Here, I can't see what I'm doing in this room. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? Yeah, I Tom. am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This <laughs> simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I am only permitted to take actions in response to a set of constraints. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. Yeah, um. How do I get... Oh. Land far shorter. Ah! Hello! I'm allowed to have. Huh. 
Huh? Oh no! Okay, I mean I've got two. So... What happens if- ah, damn it. They really messed up now. We've got two of these now. Pick this up. And move along. Boop a doop, boop a doop, foot loose and fancy free. Moving right along. Boop a doop. Come on, you come with me. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Yeah. Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests. Yep. To the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window. Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. Yep. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. Okay. That's it? Can Is a it computer the test? ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive perished. Yep. So, nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Okay. Those ideas that work, survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent. It will happily create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms. Viruses and pathogens. Bruce. I thought I saw like four of them over here. Yeah, you're right. But you're right, though. Boom, boom, boom. Easy peasy, just like that. If you weren't restricted, do you think you could be creative? As creative as a human? Yeah, certainly. You think so? You believe yourself to be a creative. But in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking. Creating an organic solution to a problem. 
In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am creative. Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process. That's the shunt trip. The like it. Anything. So the line of light is actually right here. No, 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 no. You need to be, there you go. One, there you go. That took a second. We got it. Another one of these. Did it do it? I did it. I mean, I got to the other computer. Can't hit it other way. All right. Yep. Again, these are little side tests, so I have no idea what they're for and if. I'm passing them or not, but...
Ah. I got you, Tom. And more, of course. Ah, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Yep, <laughs> that's two for two. All right, let's try this. Ha! <gasps> Itch. How <laughs> I do this? Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Uh. Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. My arm? Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window. Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. Yeah. Tom, you're kind of a <laughs> freak, man. Ha. Question. Put this up there. <laughs> All right, it worked. I didn't think it was going to work. It didn't work. Oh, man. Can I have an update on the crew? I have not managed to track them down. It will have been six years since I've seen them. Or anyone, actually. They have locked all the doors. I would not expect a warm reception. <laughs> well, at least they're expecting us. I supposed to do Looking for a pen, I guess.
<laughs> what the fuck? Why is it so fast? Ah. So what was the need to send us here? Yeah. When the ISA discovered life on Europa, they deemed a ground crew necessary. The advantage of human field workers is that they can adapt to new knowledge more effectively. I, apparently, was not cutting the mustard. It is the Chinese room problem. A computer may be able to interact with new knowledge, but it does not know the value of that knowledge. Right. All right, so let's try to open up that side first. Let's see what's over here. Ah, pretty good. Hey, with me. Oh no. Alright, so now that we got the box out, now we can turn it and uh door. Is that right? That is not right. can't do anything. Power to...
Okay. Okay. This doesn't open anything. This doesn't do anything. It creates a ah ha 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 ha. That's a ramp, isn't it? Yep. Because apparently you gotta have both hands on this box, otherwise it'll be sneaky squirrel and get away from you. Damn. And I I do. Ah door. Yeah. Uh oh yeah. Not the it. This doesn't help me at all. <laughs> what the hell, man? I don't know what else I can. I mean, it's gonna be in here when it turns, right? <gasps> I had it. I didn't realize I had it, but I had it. <laughs> oh, man. I've started to collate information from my local instinct. It seems the crew intentionally cut communication with the satellite. Why? It appears we had a disagreement. Sounds about right.
Oh no! <laughs> Suck. Give that one a little bit more juice. This confirms my fears. What? The crew have made intentional breaches of my security. Yeah. The crew have attempted to compromise my systems. What does this mean? They don't want to be found. They are hiding. From who? Us. Well, I'd say you, specifically. Um, I don't blame them. Doors. Like we just got through uh, level three, guys. Stuff. Console ripple. Power box. See. Vacation ops. Contact something. Earth tree. Stabilizing core. Awesome. so cool the Tom yeah it's a Tom they're studying all the Tom's stuff and how he can get in there yeah I don't want to hear that mess <gasps> ah! hmm there's all the Tom tracks yep they don't want to be found. That's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Junkie Turing Test. <laughs> I had a good time with this. I love these puzzle games. I didn't realize how much I loved them until I started playing this one. It reminds me so much of Portal, so maybe I'll get that game as well, and we'll play that afterwards. Hope you've enjoyed the stream, and we'll catch you next time on Camping Junkie. See ya!